So we've already established that I'm a points guy. To me, there's nothing that matches the pure old school reliability and simplicity of an analog ignition. And we've already established that there is no tangible performance advantage of HEI over points. It really comes down to convenience. And, and every time we do one of these videos, that's what we get. We get like 30 guys will jump in there and say, yeah, you know, I agree, points are great, but you know, I don't want to have to hassle with changing them and so on and so forth. And they make it sound like it's like it's the Manhattan Project, like, you know, it's a big thing changing points. But luckily enough, the other morning I'm coming into the shop and we've been using our, our 67 GT as our daily for, for a while now. And as I'm coming into the shop, uh, it starts sputtering at low RPM. And it tells me right away, I know it needs points. You know, when you do the stuff long enough, you know the different feels, you know, what, what each thing feels like. So off idle, right, you know, light load, it's going bop, 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 tell me the points are toast. So I popped the cap off real quick and I can see the door barely opening, another bad rubbing block. So he says, you know, here's the perfect opportunity. Let's do a points video, changing points, right? Let's take the mystery out of this thing and, and show exactly the procedures that are involved. But I'm gonna put a little spin on this now too, because I'm gonna show you how to do this the, the best possible way, right? It, we don't, we're not gonna, okay, here, come here. So here's a, here's a, a Chrysler distributor, very similar to a Ford, uh, AMC, a little bit different than General Motors. Well, I'll explain the difference here. GM distributors, points distributors, have the advanced weights up top over here. And because of that, you can't really get a feeler gauge in to, to gap the points. So you have to use a dwell meter. I'm going to get to that in a minute. When you set the gap with a feeler gauge, when you set the point gap with a feeler gauge, you're doing it in order to attain a certain amount of dwell. So 30 degrees of dwell is what we want on this V8, this Chrysler V8. Um, but there's a way to use the dwell meter to set these points also. So I'm going to forego the whole feeler gauge thing. I'm going to go right to the punch and show you how to set, how to change the points and set them on a Chrysler, Ford, or AMC, or anything really uh, that has points, the same way you would with a dwell meter on a GM car. So let's get to it. So we're not going to use our feeler gauge. What we need for this, what I use, every car is a little bit different. I use two different screwdrivers and I'll explain that in a minute. An ignition wrench. You know, you guys, right, you all you all have ignition wrenches banging around in the bottom of your toolbox. What the hell do you use that for? Well I'm going to show you. It's an ignition wrench and we're going to use it in the ignition. And we got our old school axle points loop. Okay. And I also picked up this set of Eklund points for the car that have this, this rubbing block that looks infinitely more stable than the, uh, the plastic jammy that's on the points that are in the car now. So, let's change points. All right, get this out of the way. Okay, so pop our cap off. Tuck that out of the way, pull our rotor off, okay, and yeah, let's see, I, I'm going to move this so you can see, right? Okay, can we see that? Let's get the coil wire off of the two and out of the way, okay. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our long screwdriver and we're going to undo the screw holding the points down. All right, now here. People always worry about dropping the screw, right? So here's what you do with this. Holding holding the screw down with the screwdriver, lift the points up with the screw in there, okay? Whoop. Then here's the screw, put it out of the way. Now we need our ignition wrench. 5 sixteenths in this case, and we just got to loosen that, pluck these wires out of the way. I'm not going to change the condenser, that's an old school condenser, it's probably 40 years old, it works perfectly. Today's condensers are hit and miss, so we're not going to change that. And here's the points we're pulling out of here, and you can see 
Yep, there's no rubbing block left. The contacts look okay. Yeah, the contacts look okay. But there's no rubbing block. So, these are garbage. So we take our new points. Loosen the nut. Put our wires on. And tighten them up. Whoops, at a bad angle here. And I'm fumbling around a little bit because I'm trying to keep things clear for the camera. I'm not used to doing this for an audience. Okay, so now we got our wires on there. We take our screw, drop it into the slot. points down onto their spot and now we're going to take our screwdriver again see I'm not used to doing this for a camera so I'm, I'm on a weird angle that I'm not normally on okay so now the points are in, the screw is snug. Now we're not going to tighten it, okay? So here's where it stops, and we're going to go just cute, okay? Now let's get that smaller, here, come over here. This is what you use this screwdriver for. I use this particular screwdriver, you use whatever works for you. So when you're going to set the points, right, this slot, this triangulated slot, and this little notch in the points, is specifically for a screwdriver. So you can take a screwdriver blade that big and you can work the points back and forth. And you wanna leave this snug, okay? Not loose, but snug. And the reason being is that it's a spring loaded. So if you just left this loose and you go to adjust, you'll see, well, okay, we'll be doing it like that. It'll just spring back. So you wanna make this just snug. Okay. And now you can move it and it stays put. All right. And so here's where the magic happens. Now normally on a Ford, Chrysler, AMC, Hudson, whatever it is with points, you would be using a feeler gauge to set them. General Motors cars you do with the dwell meter. Well, I'm going to show you how to do all of those cars instead of using a feeler gauge to use the dwell meter and get an exact measurement. Because remember now when you set them by with the feeler gauge or matchbook cover because I know right away 75 guys I use a matchbook cover you're only approximating what the dwell should be with the point gap so we're going to skip right to the chase and go right to the dwell so what we do here is take a dwell meter put it in a position where we can see it now you can see right here this this graph right here is dwell right the top scale is v8 the bottom scale is for a six cylinder all right so we're looking for 30 degrees which is right there so we hook up the green wire to the negative on the coil and we hook up the black wire to a ground okay and now what we're going to do is now the, the ignition has to be on for this to work so you gotta turn your key on. Now if you've got somebody who could sit in the car and crank it for you, you're miles ahead. But if not, you have to crank it under the hood. So we're gonna use these two screwdrivers. This one here to jump out the solenoid, crank the motor, and this one here to adjust that slot in the points while we watch the meter. All right, so there you go. So let's, There's our 30. So now we're just gonna lock the screwdriver. 
and we got our 30. And that's it. That's all it is to changing a set of points and gapping them with the dwell meter. Not rocket science, right? Now, if you don't have a dwell meter, of course, you can gap them with a feeler gauge and get the same results. But that's just a, a, a more scientific method of doing it. You know what, let me unplug this before I zap myself. Okay. Uh, oh, you know what I forgot to do? Look, because I'm, I'm doing this for the camera. I forgot one of the most important things. You gotta lube the points. So a lot of points will come with a set with a little lube capsule. I've been using this stuff since I was a teenager, the Axel. Uh, not this exact tube, but I've been using this stuff forever. And you just take a little bit of it like that and just wipe it on the cam lobe. Okay, and that's it. So now they're lubed. Much, much better than new. Well, I hope you got something out of that. See, it's not rocket science. I'll see you tomorrow.